Okay, we're talking about how to solve this problem in two ways. Um, let's first read it. Which inequality is represented by the graph below? So we have this graph, and what we're looking at is a line right here. So it's a graph of the line, and then the reason there's all these lines above it is because we're shading above the line. We're saying that this is a graph of this line and everything above it. Now, you might be thinking, well, Sean, isn't everything to the left of it? It looks that way, doesn't it? But really, if you kept extending this line and you kept shading in, what you would essentially be doing is taking your whole plane and splitting it in two regions, everything below the line and everything above it. If that explanation doesn't make sense, think about it this way. Every, li every line is made up of points, like this point right here and this one here and so on and so forth. This graph shades everything directly above the points. See that, right? It's right above it. Not everything below. And the reason we shade at an angle like this is that it's tradition, and it helps us solve some more complex problems. We shade perpendicular to the line, and that becomes very helpful. With that being said, this question can be quickly solved uh, by looking at the equations here, and then we can also solve it using the graphing calculator. So, first, um, I notice that this graph, this line, excuse me, crosses the y-axis here. The y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So all these right here, they're in mx plus b form. That means, so even though it's not y equals mx plus b, it's y is greater than or less than mx plus b, m is still your slope, and b is still the y-intercept. So here, negative 3 and negative 3, those intercepts are OK, not 2 and 2. Those are off. Now let's find the slope. Uh, we could calculate by subtracting. I'm just going to count on the graph. It goes up 2 and over 1. I don't even know what the increments are, really, but it doesn't matter. right? It's up 2 and over 1. So here, that means our slope is 2 divided by 1 or 2. So it's one of these choices, slope of 2, intercept of 3. The answer is choice 2 because the height, y, is above or equal to the line 2x minus 3. It's everything above it, not below. Now, if you want to do this on the graphing calculator, you might have to go through the examples, but it's a good backup. So I'm going to clear off what I have in there. I'm going to enter in 2x minus 3. And you might not see a greater than or less than sign. That's OK. Scroll to the left, all the way to the left, and you'll see this little icon. It's flashing now, because right now it's set on a line. But if you hit enter, you'll notice it changes. And what we're looking for is this, the triangle that blinks as if it's shading above the line. See that shading for the shaded region? And then if we go to graph, now I get this really ah, scary graph, right? So I'm going to go to zoom, and I want to do a standard zoom, which is choice six. And here you can see, right, this is the line we're dealing with, and the region above it is shaded. But if you can't read it, if you're trying to figure out, is this the same line, just go to, um, you can go to trace, and you can scroll along to see the points that are on it. You'll see it hits 0, negative 3, like it does here. As I go to the right, right, if I keep going, you'll see that it hits points that are exactly on this graph. And sometimes it's really close. We don't always get nice integers. So if that's not working, go to second calc, right? And you can look at different things here. For example, I'm going to use the value button. So the value button, basically you plug in x and it will give you the y. So if I plug in 2, it gives me y is 1. That means when x is 2, y is 1. Our graph here says the same thing. When x is 2, y is 1. So you can check a few points that way. Right? Okay, I hope this helped.